Hi. In this video I would like to talk about the power characteristics of power plants and how they're related to the torque characteristics which we can measure in the lab. And the relationship between the two is the equation P equals omega T. We've seen already that uh, different kinds of power plant have very different speed torque characteristics. Uh, these are some examples. Um, this is another example, this is data for uh, human power plants, uh, competitive cyclists. This is a speed torque characteristic and it's almost a straight line. And in your experiments in the lab where you measured the uh, force, the lifting force and the linear speed of a weight lifted by a DC motor, we see data like this. Now there's a lot of scatter and a lot of bad data there, but if you use your imagination a bit, you can uh, maybe imagine that there is a straight line relationship underlying all of that. So I'm going to start by looking at um, power plants like this that have a simple straight line speed torque relationship. That doesn't cover all power plants but it covers some important ones. Uh, certainly doesn't cover uh, internal combustion engines and this type of motor but it would appear to cover competitive cyclists and maybe uh, DC motors. So, uh, let's uh, just imagine a general uh, speed torque characteristic, uh, speed or rotational speed and torque, which is uh, a straight line. So again, this is not true for any kind of power plant, but it's true for uh, some types. So, uh, it's a straight line from maximum torque, which we call T0. T0 is often called the stall torque and we have a maximum speed omega 0 which is often called a no load speed because it's the speed when there is zero torque and this axis is at zero speed. So uh, to analyze this it would be nice to have an equation for that line. So there are different ways you can construct the equation for the line. You can use your method of choice. You might like to say y equals mx plus c or uh, you might like to use a similar triangles kind of approach. So if we draw a triangle here, uh, that length is omega zero minus omega, and that height is the torque T. Whichever way you go about it, and it doesn't really matter, uh, you will come up with an equation like this. And that is an equation for that line that relates the torque T, which is the y-axis of our graph, to uh, the angular velocity omega, which is the x-axis in our graph. So that's our uh, speed torque relationship. And all that really is is the equation of a straight line. Okay, And T0 and omega 0 are constants in this expression. So uh, I would like to find out an equation for power as a function of angular velocity at omega, so that I can then plot a graph of power as a function of omega. So we know that P equals omega t, always, for any rotating machine. So uh, we simply multiply our torque t by our speed omega. Uh, omega times t0, 1 minus omega over omega 0. Uh, and we're going to expand that out a little bit more and rearrange it a little bit so that it is uh, t0 omega minus t0 over omega 0 times omega squared. And when it's written like that, you can see that it is a quadratic equation. The omega is the variable, t0 omega 0 and t0 are, are constants, so that is basically a quadratic equation. Uh, so let's think about the properties of that equation a little bit, or that function. Uh, let's look at some 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 values, some endpoints. So one, uh, you know, one speed of interest is uh, omega equals zero when the motor is stopped. Um, at omega equals zero, our power is going to be uh, zero. Okay. Uh, at the other extreme, when omega equals omega zero. When the motor is at maximum speed, we have a power of uh, t0 omega 0 minus t0 over omega 0 
omega 0 squared uh, and that is equal to 0 because the omega 0 is going to cancel out here. So that makes sense. Okay, the power is um, let's go back to our graph we're saying that the power is zero when the speed of the motor is zero and that makes sense because there's no speed, there's no power it's also saying that the power is zero when the speed is equal to omega zero, a maximum uh, and that makes sense because at maximum speed there is no torque and with no, with no torque there can be no power so uh, on our uh, speed power graph then, let's just draw the axis uh, omega p, uh, we have an omega of 0 and we have an omega 0 over here. Uh, we now know two points on this graph. We know that at a speed of 0 the power is 0 and at a speed of omega 0 the power is 0. Okay, so what's happening in between those two points? Well, uh, we know about quadratic functions, we know what they look like and we know uh, how they work. Um, and that is a quadratic function where the x squared term or the omega squared term has a negative coefficient. So we know that uh, we can deduce from that that the function will be curved that way, concave down rather than uh, this way, concave up. Okay. So if we had to hazard a guess at what this uh, curve does uh, in between those two points, if those two points are fixed, we might guess that it is shaped uh, like that. Okay. Now let's try to um, be a bit more rigorous about that. Let's see if we can we can actually find out a bit more about that. One thing that's important when you're working with a power plant and designing around a power plant is to know how you get maximum power from the power plant. And if we're right about the shape of this curve, then the maximum power uh, is about there. It seems to be coming somewhere around about the middle of the range. Okay, so let's find out exactly where the maximum power is. So let me just write down my power function again. P equals uh, T0 omega minus T0 over omega 0 omega squared. If we, uh, that is showing us that power varies as a function of omega. If we want to find out where the maximum power is, we do a little bit of calculus. The maximum power will occur where dp d omega equals zero. Okay, so let's do that. Let's differentiate power with respect to angular velocity. Uh, we differentiate the t zero omega term. We get t zero. We differentiate the uh, quadratic bit of it. We are going to get two t zero over omega zero omega. Uh, we set that to zero to find the maximum and we find that t0 equals 2 t0 over omega 0 omega the t zeros will cancel out of that equation rearrange it a bit and we find omega equals omega 0 over 2 okay so what we're claiming what this analysis is showing is that power is a maximum when angular velocity omega is equal to half of the maximum angular velocity. We should of course go one step further with this and I'll leave this as an exercise for you. We should uh, check that it's uh, a max and not a min. And to do that uh, we need to differentiate the power again, look at the second derivative and check whether that's positive or negative at omega zero over 2. Okay, so uh, assuming that that's true, okay, I've checked it, but I won't do it in the video, but I've checked it and you should check it. Uh, if that's true, then uh, we're saying we have a maximum power at omega equals omega 0 over 2 at exactly the midpoint of our uh, range of speeds. Right here. Okay, uh, and that's an interesting result. It's saying that if you want to get maximum power out of uh, this kind of power plant, any power plant with a straight line omega t curve, then you should be running at 
uh, half of maximum speed. And that's uh, kind of a surprising result and not at all an obvious result. Now, let's apply that to our hypothetical cyclist here. We have, um, from this physiology paper, we actually have this graph and they've produced an equation for this graph as well. Okay, uh, This equation here, y equals minus 1.04 uh, plus or minus an error times x plus 266 plus or minus an uncertainty. So let's check that equation and uh, work with it and see what it tells us about the power of this particular cyclist. Uh, so our I'm going to change the notation a little bit. Okay, I'm going to say that uh, instead of expressing it in x and y, I'm going to call the torque t, which we're more used to, uh, minus 1.04, and the speed, the angular speed, or the rotational speed, I'm going to call s, where s is the speed in RPM. Uh, and that's the equation from that paper without the plus or minus uncertainty ranges. So just to make it clear, s here is the pedaling speed. Pedaling speed in RPM. Um, so let's do a bit of uh, extrapolation on that curve then. Uh, let's find out what the stall torque is. So the, tol the stall torque is the torque the cyclist produces uh, at a standstill. So I'm pushing really hard against the pedals, but the pedals are, are not moving. Um, so uh, at a speed of zero, uh, the torque is 266 newton meters, and that is our stall torque. Okay. Uh, let's find out what the maximum speed is. And the maximum speed, if we extrapolate that straight line, the maximum speed is going to occur when the torque is zero. Okay, a torque equals zero. Uh, S is equal to uh, 266 over 1.04 uh, is just under 256 Newton or 256 RPM. Uh, I would like to have that in radians per second so that I can do power calculations. So I'm going to call that, our, well it is our maximum speed, omega 0 is uh, 256 rpm divided by 60 revolutions per second times 2 pi radians for every revolution. get that. I'll round that off to 26.8 radians per second. So now we can think in terms of uh, stall torque and um, that's not right. Yes it is. We can think in terms of uh, stall torque and maximum speed and all in radians per second. Now, and our power our power is uh, omega t0 1 minus omega squared over omega 0. Okay, that's completely wrong. Our power is just omega times all of that. Now, so according to our uh, derivation that we did a few minutes ago, uh, the maximum power is at uh, speed equal to half of our or half of our maximum speed uh, and that is uh, 26.8 rads per second over 2 is 13.4 radians per second and let me convert that back into RPM so that we can uh, check it out on the original graph which was in RPM um, 
it's 13.4 radians per second divided by 2 pi. It's that many revolutions per second times 60 is just under 128 revolutions per minute. The power that we have at that speed is well, power is omega t0 1 minus omega over omega 0 for this particular kind of power plant. Uh, so the power there is, uh, so we substitute in for omega, we substitute in our omega 0 over 2, half of our maximum speed, that's 13.4 rads per second. We need our uh, T0, 266 newton meters times 266 times 1 minus uh, with an omega of half omega 0 this fraction omega over, over omega 0 is a half so for that we get 13.4 times 266 times a half is 1782 in units of watts. So that is our maximum power and we're saying it occurs at a speed of 128 rpm or 13.4 radians per second. So let's uh, re return to our data here and in this paper, uh, this uh, physiology uh, article, they actually published a power speed curve as well. So let's take a look at it and see if it's consistent with our calculations. So they show maximum power at, sure enough, about 125 RPM. We said 128. And they show a maximum power value of something between 1700 and 1800 watts. And we said 1780. Okay. So what we've done here is we've started by saying, by thinking about a general power plant that happens to have a linear speed torque curve. We've represent that curve as an equation for torque as a function of speed. Uh, we've then got an equation for power as a function of speed and we've examined the properties of this equation a bit and found that maximum power is going to happen when you're running at half of maximum speed and you're going to get a quadratic curve like this. And finally we have checked that out for a specific power plant that is a human cyclist. We find uh, that from a particular set of torque data we can calculate the power and we can calculate the maximum power and we can calculate the speed that it occurs at.